on social media, uh, not in the best of health. So, Tommy, I know that you're very close to one of the greatest of all time, Terry Funk. So uh, is there any update on the status right now of Hall of Famer Terry Funk? Well, with social media, things kind of start to take a life of their own. And I'm started getting a lot of texts about Terry Funk and his health. And then I start <laughs> seeing all these different tweets about Terry. And uh, then the biggest one was the WWE. And I'm like, what is going on? I talked to Terry on his birthday, uh, and he was fine. I talked to Terry the week before his birthday for 40 minutes. Um, and when I tell you, he was and is as sharp as a tack. Um, I, and I'm talking on every level. I'm talking about talking about college for my daughters, talking about the wrestling business where he knows about AEW. Uh, he calls them from Dusty's sons, Dusty's boys. Um, <clears throat> he, oh, he talks about Vince. He talks about, he knows about the Peacock network and how the WWE, WWE is always expanding all that stuff. Terry is in an assisted living place. He still has his home. He basically is 77 years old and he's like his daughter's worried because he's alone and he's like yeah sometimes i was forgetful yeah i had a rough patch with his health and i'm alone my one daughter lives in another state my other daughter lives kind of far away and ever since he's moved there he's actually been in better um i don't want to say spirits just more with it i don't know I haven't spoken to his daughters about his mental health, but when I tell you, as clear as my conversation is with you, mm -hmm. that's the conversation I'm talking with Terry. And then I call him up yesterday, specifically, I leave him a message, he calls me back, and he's like, what's going on? And I'm I start telling him all the stuff, Dave, and this started from Don Morocco's podcast, interviewing Scott Casey, which if you actually sit back and listen to those words i just said it's awesome to begin with yes and i did I'm not hear this Scott podcast Casey. i need to hear this like so again don morocco's podcast kudos that you have the podcast i would love it i don't know how to listen to podcasts but one day i will um and has scott casey on and apparently i don't know but it painted terry as not being able to put two sentences together, uh, having dementia, all that stuff. And so I told Terry this. I won't say what Terry said about Scott Casey, and except for he's full of shit. Always was. And it was perhaps the funniest conversation because now Terry is like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, you know what, Tommy, we're going to make money out of this. He's like, maybe uh, Sika's kid and Paulie with that history will do me and you. And I was like, wait, you want to wrestle? And he's like, Paulie, well, we have such history. You and Paulie and Sika, his kid, he's talking about Roman Reigns. Again, you know, you're talking to a 77-year-old man who's been wrestling his entire life. For everyone from that generation, Terry Funk was the great, greatest in-ring performer because he was also, guess what, the NWA champion. And for a lot of the people of that era, and I've spoken to them, they said Terry could outlast everyone in the ring and then in the bar. And that's all they did their whole life. And, I mean, you think about what he did for ECW. And, I mean, stuff that he went to WWE. <clears throat> he was just... Like, he abused his body, which you're going to have some issues for. He's also 77 years old. We all hold him at this um, point of this. He's so strong. He's so many people's heroes. But, man, you get old. Uh, <clears throat> great conversation. And then he was just like, <laughs> he's like, we're going to make money off of this. He's like, I'm coming out of retirement. 
let's book it. Bring your your hardcore house to, uh, we're going to do it. And then I said, okay. Uh, he was like, how about, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so crazy. I'm going to, uh, I still think I could draw big houses. I go, you can draw houses. He goes, I know, I'm just trying to be modest. And he's just like, I could outdraw. I heard the ratings are in the shitter. Um, and and what I, again, this is my normal conversation with Terry, but everything was so awesome. <laughs> so then we, I hang up, and then he calls me back, and he goes, this is what we're going to do. I'm either going to go get arrested, or I'm thinking of taking off all my clothes and running out in the street and start beating people up. We'll make money on this somehow. I go, don't do that. He goes, well, if they think I'm crazy, hell, I'll show them I'm crazy. And I go, you've always been crazy, middle-aged and crazy. And then he was just like, I guess I'm just old-aged and crazy. Aren't you supposed to be? Damn it, leave me alone. <laughs> and then what was the final kicker? He hangs up. He calls me back again. And you got to understand, the first time I went to Japan uh, with, for Onita, Terry Funk wanted me to walk up to Onita and slap him across the face and fight him for real. He said, you'll draw a big house. He goes, just fight him. There'll be all the publicity there. Just, you don't, I go, Terry, I don't even know the guy. And he's like, just do it. I'm telling you, you'll draw, you'll fill out that big stadium there, me and Mick worked. So he thinks like that. And he's always been this innovator and his thinking and all this stuff. So then he said, I want you to put this on your computer, which means social media. <clears throat> he said, tell everybody, I'm so crazy. I'm so nuts. And he goes, I'm sitting here in my assisted uh, home, and I got my thumb up my ass, and I'm going to start whistling Dixie, but I don't remember the words. And then he laughed, and then he hung up on me. And I go, they call me back again and said, you better do that. So that's what I did. And that is Terry Funk 101. That's his health update. Um, he's 77 years old. I forget things. Bubba forgets things. I don't know how I'm going to be at 77. Uh, my mom tells me the same stories. She's seven. No, she's 80. Um, what I'm just trying to say to everybody, they jumped on the negative and it was thought this his health was in such peril and all that stuff. It, it's just not true. And the one thing that bothered me, even though I said, hey, WWE didn't say anything wrong, and it's awesome that on a random Tuesday, Terry Funk is trending, and it's the power of professional wrestling. But he said, I spoke to two people today, you and the person who runs my computer, which means his dirty funker social media. He goes, that's it. Nobody called me. Nobody checked in on me. And he's like, I also don't call people back, but no one else called me. And I was like, how do you release a statement where you don't check your facts because that's how rumors start. And when you're, uh, uh, again, they said nice things. So it's not, but as you know, from how, why he's trending is because everyone thinks he's in such poor health. Yeah. All it takes, Tommy, and you know this now in this world, especially with social media, only takes one person to say one thing and everybody jumps on it. And then, Next thing you know, people are commenting, it's being retweeted, and then it blow, blows up to the point where, like you said, in the middle of the afternoon, Terry Funk is trending. But I'm glad being that you're so close to him. And like you just said, you spoke to him on his birthday. His birthday was just a week ago. You know, it's not like you're talking about six months ago. This was last week was his birthday. So you knew better, and you called him, and you had basically the same conversation that you had with a man you know, the last year, two years, five years, 10 years. And, and Dave, I mean, I talk to him a lot and I know me and Bubba and I know Mick want to go see him. But it, listen, it, it's when you, you say when somebody puts it out there, but what like WWE put it out there without fact checking. And again, it wasn't a bad tweet, but it was because they're acting like he's it was, <clears throat> it wasn't from him. And I'm just telling you, I know, yeah, he had, I think they could say that about every wrestler. 
Uh, Paul, there was a video around of Paul Orndorff recently, which was very, very sad. And then someone posted later a picture. Hey, he's on medicine. He's doing good. Yeah, in fact, gonna... there was a picture of him Fourth of July weekend sitting back watching TV, drinking a beer. Again, a 77-year-old man that uh, gave his entire life to the wrestling industry still it watches it. You're going to have effects. And yes, uh, if he has early dementia, I don't know, but I'm not from our conversations. My favorite part about it, he's just like, uh, they all say I'm crazy. He goes, hell, you're crazier than everybody. You're still doing this shit. And we joke about it. And I said, well, I'm the biggest mark. And he's like, I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> but what a hundred percent not true about his, his declining health or that he's not there. And the only sad part about this is now he wants to come out of retirement and wants me to book angles off of this for him. So thank you world of the internet. The cool thing too. I, and I did tell him and he is humble. I said, Terry, do you, can you imagine that like with the Stanley Cup, the NBA, and all that's going on in the world? Because he was trending like up to like seven at one point. I go, that people are showing you so much love while you're alive. And he thought that was great. Yeah. And, and that is great. And I love, I've seen people post on Tuesdays, Terry Tuesday, which should always be a thing. But... You can't let everything you read or hear spiral out of control because, hey, man, it, it, uh, it has an, a, a negative effect or a negative connotation to it. And, I mean, a lot of people were just thanking me. for, And I don't like to talk about, like, my private stuff or my private conversations, but this time... Uh, I felt it would. Uh, I mean, I told you, I I'll text you about like, hey, I had this amazing conversation with Jimmy Valiant. You know, when I went off about, because that affected me, uh, when I I spoke to Terry after, on the same day, I spoke to t Jimmy Valiant and Terry Funk, which is just awesome. And when I was telling Jimmy, I mean, I'm sorry, telling Terry about the stuff with Jimmy, he was like, how old is he? I go, he's 79 and he's still wrestling. And he's like, that son of a bitch, I'm coming out of retirement because he's stealing my senior citizen heat. <laughs> and then he's like, I'll beat the shit out of him, bloody him up, and we'll draw a lot of money like we used to because he'll sell his ass off. How dare he keep on wrestling? I'm going to kick his ass. And now he wants to make money with Jimmy uh, Valiant again. That's the beauty of Terry Funk. Well, I'm glad that you spoke to Terry Funk. I'm glad that he's doing well. I'm glad that, you know, we're finding out now it's not nearly as bad as a lot of people thought that it was. You know, we, we kind of had the statement, you know, Ed Robinson, our producer, knows it's, it's better to be late than too early. So I know that a lot of people like to put stuff out there in order to get clicks or be the first one to get the news out. But until everything is known and confirmed, and like Tommy just said, you know, he only got two phone calls yesterday when everything was out there of his poor health. So... Tommy, I'm glad that you spoke to him. Terry Funk, to me, Tommy, and you know this, I, I, I believe he's on the Mount Rushmore. He's he's one of the greatest of all time. I mean, my number one will always be Ric Flair, but right after that, my number two, and it's it's close, is is the great Terry Funk. And uh, I, I'm glad that people are, are now showing the appreciation that he deserves because he is one of the greatest of all time. Absolutely. And Kyle O'Reilly put out a nice little tweet. This one's for the Funker. I don't know if he, uh, you know, when you're talking about stuff that happens on social media, the world happens so, so quick, and everyone wants to jump on something. It's cool that everyone still cares about a 77-year-old man yep. because a lot of people don't remember people or you get the, wow, is he even still alive? So it's cool that uh, people still care. And he, well, he appreciates it. I Listen, I even told him what, uh, I go, do you know what trending is? He goes, it means I'm popular. He goes, I'm trendy. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, kind of, sort of, yeah. He goes, but like it happens on the computer. Like I go, and again, I told him, but the fact that he knows what like trending is and all that, my mother doesn't know what trending is. She knows what a trendsetter is. Yeah. But uh, hey, <clears throat> it, it's... 
I was yesterday was a it was a a weird day, but then it became a super fun day because I got to list talk to Terry Funk uh, four different times <laughs> to break away from the different things that I was doing in the day. But at least it's all for positive. <clears throat> well, Tommy, thank you for sharing that with the Busted Open Nation. You mentioned Jimmy Boogie Woogie Man Valiant. Uh, he had many great matches and memories from the Great American Bash, and we had the Great American Bash on NXT last night. We're going to dive in.